We live in a twilight world and there are no friends at dusk. So this is going to be a very, very quick presentation. Just a bit of, um, you know, dot connecting, synchro mysticism. Interesting stuff, you know, just make of it what you will. But first things first, I recommend everyone goes and checks out this particular podcast. You can get the first hour, which is pretty much the most important stuff, over on Spotify. Or, you know, sign up to Higher Side Chats if you want to hear the full two hours but the main stuff i'm referring to is pretty much in the first hour with you know one of the great synchro mystics out there michael Wan, and his work he done regarding basically mi5 setting up what is now the cia so yeah it's called uh culture creation rituals hijacking reality and a Saturnian scheme, Michael Wan. Definitely, if you've got a spare two and a half hours and you're a bit bored, definitely check it out. This was obviously pre... or in the midst of the scamdemic. And, you know, he brings up a lot of stuff about, like, um, the 2012 London Olympics, and he ties it all back to Britain, basically. Which is one of the things I've been saying a lot. And I know when I try and say look you know we've been in a one world government for well forever and the center point is the city of london i know a lot of people don't like that or they're not on board of that i know especially a lot of the um the guys on the other side of the pond over in america really struggle to swallow that pill when i say with that so yeah he does a lot better of a job than i do in in connecting dots and showing you how it all brings back to you know the british empire uh british intelligence which is really you know the city of london i mean most british people like myself we don't really benefit from this this empire and throughout the ages the people who have come up you know the worst or got mistreated the most by the empire was uh you know british people themselves so yeah but anyway let's, let's crack on so i was looking at you know the queen lately and her dress and this you know the black dot on her head and mainly her brooch which is kind of like a um well someone said it was a hydra and yeah i can see that man it's definitely a mask and yeah hydra and i was thinking okay let's let's play with that that's a hydra a hydra mask first firstly you know the symbol of a mask that in itself the fact that the queen is wearing a mask as her brooch is very symbolic because she is a mask a mask of a, is of course like a facade which hides something okay she is the mask and there's something behind her she is the mask that is worn in public and obviously behind the mask there's something else we don't know what it is i don't believe it's human that's my personal opinion so the hydra the hydra for those that don't know is in greek mythology is this creature here you may have seen it you know pop culture you might have seen it in like the, the disney hercules fi uh, film and yeah i believe it's one of the, the beasts that hercules had to fight and basically you know if you chop off one of its head two more will grow in its place so you start chopping off its head you're going to only make it stronger okay you've got to, to kill this beast you've got to go to the belly you've got to take it in the heart or the belly you know the center of its body and not waste your energy on all these different heads it's you know which which are just it's power to me that's very symbolic of the current geopolitical structure we have with of course london the city of London and what's ever below it being the belly of the beast and things like Russia, China, the USA, you know, Israel. These are all the heads of the snake, which people waste their time trying to cut off. And of course, I'm talking metaphorically, if you do go and waste your energy on thinking that the USA, Russia, China or Israel run the world, you're going to be cutting this fucker's head off and two more will grow back. So the Hydra, yeah, it's quite a 
a symbolic beast, you know. Now, lately in pop culture, what we've seen in the Marvel films is the bad guys or the adversaries to Captain America are called Hydra. And basically, they're, they're a secret society that's embedded within all the governments around the world. And of course, Captain America, the hero, is, you know, battling with this Hydra who are trying to take over the world. And you pretty much don't know who is in Hydra and who is not. So they're embedded everywhere. They're embedded within S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, within the Avengers, most of the government. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, again, I think that's very, very symbolic of these City of London kind of Freemasons that are all over the place. And you don't know. You don't know if they're in the club or not in the club, you know. For example, I'd say, you know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, you know, whether they're real people or not, I don't know. But let's just for the sake of argument, say they're real flesh and blood humans like me and you. They would definitely be undercover agents of the city of London, making sure everything in America is going to plan in part of the new world order structure. And yeah. It's only behind doors you're going to know that they are, you know, Hail Hydra agents. So the reason I brought up Michael Wan is because, yeah, in his, um, you know, podcast on the Higher Side Chats, he goes into the BSC, the British Security Coordination. Now, these were the guys that went over to the United States and were embedded into the government and mainstream media and basically they were propagandists that knew how to effectively use media and advertisement to mind control the public basically because for those who don't know the vast majority i think it was nine out of ten americans did not want to get involved in a european war and not only that the vast majority of americans were actually more supportive of the, of the Nazis than they were the British. Now, you've got to remember, and this is me, this is this is my opinion here, Take make of it what you will, throw it in the bin, or take it to the bank, it's up to you, that America has always been a part of the British Empire, and, you know, why they call the America, the, you know, the US, the, the big experiment, it was because the whole experiment was to colonize america while simultaneously telling them that they are free from being a colony a classic inversion which i think was very successful for example say with india they straight up colonized it and led with an iron fist and military presence with the united states they thought they'd try a different approach and funded the whole story of independence and yeah planted that seed and allowed it to grow now the problem is of course later on they had to then reap the seeds they sowed and bring the americans back into the british empire and mobilize them into a garrison state of the british empire of course this was the whole point of world war ii and yeah these guys the bsc this was their job to infiltrate all of the media and slowly start turning a nation that was very anti-British into a nation that was very pro-British. And my God, did they do a very good job. So, as this is at the bottom here, Winston Churchill, he was the guy behind this. I mean, he, he that guy is a very, very sinister character. I think people think that we all, you know, here in England, we all love him. But believe me, we don't, man. He, he sold this country out big time. And he was half American and his ro whole role in the grand stage was to, yeah, like I just said, bring the United States back into the British Empire and, you know, mobilize them into military service. And that all was under the guise of World War Two. So, yeah, they had something called Camp X. I'm not going to go into detail about what that was, but that was, you know... 
basically about communication. It was set up in t- Ontario, Canada, and it all involved communication. The biggest weapon of all... This is why I want people to understand. The biggest weapon of all is perception. Controlling perception with the weapons being communication. And yet again, when I when I say... When people ask me, like, well, how can you prove the city of London rules the world? And I'll get to that. But basically, it's because they dominate all the communication, therefore dominating the perception of the masses. They've successfully done it in Britain. They've successfully done it to Nazi Germany. They've successfully done it to the USSR. They've successfully done it to the US. It's not about how many tanks you own. It's not about how many nuclear bombs you own. It's not about how much um, dollars you've got in the bank. It's not how mu- about how much gold you've got in reserves. It's not about how much oil you got. It's about controlling perception. See, this is the misdirect that's done with um, Hollywood and all that stuff is making people believe that Russia and China and the USA are running the show because they have the, the most amount of dollars, tanks and nuclear weapons. But no, their nations and their peoples are both, are all, sorry, controlled by perception which the city of London dominates. Now, at Campex, one of their machines they used was called the Hydra. And this is it, guys. Back to the Hydra. This was crucial in communication, telecommunication, and getting, you know, the desired and controlled perception out to the masses. It's all about having the monopoly on perception and forcing a perception onto the globe and getting everyone onto like a hive mind mentality of how the world is, was, and how it should be. So yeah, just back back to the BSC, the British Security Coordination. They obviously were given an in by the Rockefellers and yeah, they were based in the Rockefeller Center, New York, on the 35th and 36th floor of that building and I think their cover was meant to be like a passport controlled or something so yeah I mean that stuff's still going on today so whenever you see a place that's you know claims to be a passport control center or any kind of passport center just be wary of that might be where the city of London have got their operatives that are controlling the mainstream media So yeah, back to the Hydra. Also, here is a very interesting map, and I think a very, very important map. It's the Cable and Wireless Great Circle map. And this is basically all of the underground, sorry, undersea cables to which communication is done from. And as you can see, Britain is in the middle, the belly of the beast. And all of these wires coming out very much look like the Hydra. Once again, another misdirect is making everyone believe that communication is done via satellites. It's not. 90% of communication is done by undersea cables, which Britain, or, you know, we'll say the City of London, has the monopoly on, and they have a big business in laying these cables, protecting these cables, and repairing these cables. Yeah, again, you never ever hear about this, in the mainstream media, but one of Britain's biggest kind of like um, revenues or industries is laying and repairing these undersea cables. And that's why Britain still maintains a really powerful navy and submarines because they're protecting this. This is it. This is the web. This is the net. This is how they control perception. It doesn't matter how many tanks you got, if these guys can control the minds of a nation, that's all that matters. Perception is everything. Hail Hydra. So yeah, that's my quick little presentation. We live in a twilight world. There are no friends at dusk. <laughs>